Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Sealed for Good. I'm your host, Shandy. Today, we'll be recapping on a topic that we've covered a few times on other episodes um, in good detail, talking about coverage rates. So I've got two product examples here. And the reason we picked these is because when, it's, when we're discussing coverage rates, they're very different as far as the considerations you need to make. So starting with uh, grips at GP Primer, and this is true for any primer that you're applying over a porous substrate. If you look at the back or you read the TDS, it will provide a guide on, or an estimation on how much you should get out of each pail and how much product you should be applying at a minimum coverage rate. But because you're going over a porous surface and the levels of porosity can change, you may not always get what's on the back of the pail. In fact, I would say that you probably never get precisely what's on the back of the pail. So this is where, you know, checking porosity, doing your water droplet test is, it can be crucial. Um, those guys that are experienced, you guys that are using the product all the time, you'll be able to tell the minute you start rolling it or brushing it onto the surface. If a surface is really thirsty, of course, you're going to need more primer. So as a bit of a rule of thumb, when we're working out coverage rates, um, you know, it's good to sort of give yourself an indication by applying one or two square meters and then you watch what happens. So if you you see the primer getting drawn in instantly or it's going from that white milky color to that transparent color straight away, then you need to sort of assess what are the weather conditions. If you're working outside, is it particularly windy? You know, because it could be the ambient temperature that's causing that. Or you look at the surface, do you see a little bit of bubbling? Um, is that substrate drawing in all the primer. And if it's not staying in its wet state for between 30 to 60 seconds, then that's a pretty clear indication that you're gonna to have to do a second coat or primer a bit heavier. Um, and then after 20 minutes or 40 minutes around that curing stage, if you still have white sort of puddles or excess primer, you need to clean them up and then go from there. So there are ways to give yourself an indication of how much it's gonna cover, um, but you will need to sort of, you know, do some trial and error. Um, and ultimately what you're achieving with this type of primer is you're creating a seal uh, and you're wanting that primer to penetrate into that surface to give you a good bond and then you're ready for the waterproofing application. So when we talk about waterproofing, um, the coverage rates are designed to be precise and the reason for that is the coverage rates is very much related to the final dry film thickness you need to achieve to ensure that the product is going to perform as intended. So there's a few ways that you can go about that. So if you look at the back of the pail for grips at 38 of C, for example, or reference to TDS, it will talk about a coverage rate of 1.5 liters per square meter. And if you do all the maths and you sort of work it out, that equates to about 1.5 millimeters over two coats per square meter, right? Or wet film thickness, which will then shrink down to the required dry film thickness. So a pail at 15 liters of 38 of C should yield that 10 square meters per pail. Um, so yeah, the most common way to check that you're getting the right coverage or the, or the correct thickness is by using a wet film gauge um, and then testing that you're getting it there. Um, and you can sort of check for consistency as well. Uh, those of you that have done our training, um, whether that be online or, or our gap training, will also understand the correlation between the thickness and the type of texture that you achieve when it's at the right thickness. Um, but another real practical way to make sure that you've applied enough product is simply by sort of, you know, working out how much product you've used over a certain area. So if you have a 10 square meter bathroom um, or 10 square meters worth of membrane that will be installed in this bathroom, you need to use this whole pail. So if you've done the bathroom, um, you've done the two coats and you have, you know, a fifth of the product left over, there's probably a high probability that you haven't achieved the correct film thickness. So what I suggest, like I said, that's a quick recap, is go to these two videos that we have the link up for, um, which covers coverage rates in two episodes. It goes into a lot of detail, talks about the correlation between performance of the product and achieving the correct thickness. And we also have this episode on how to achieve the correct um, film thickness and techniques of using a wet film gauge. So we hope you found this useful and until next time, happy waterproofing. Well done to Professional Tiling Group. This week's Grips at Applicator Spotlight, excellent use of Grips at 38FC. Happy waterproofing and enjoy.